Hello class, it's Dr. Mike here. Some more Python for you for my Python for data, data analysis. Uh, this is around week 11 as the time this recording. Uh, this is specifically around the Iris data set. So previously we've been looking at, you started the course off writing code and then you got into bringing files in and then you looked at libraries like NumPy, Matplotlib and so on. And then now at this part of the course, you're going to really move more into data analysis itself. And I have other presentations that get into some more nitty gritty about the process. But this is something I want to sort of start you off with for this first assignment, which is the Iris data set part one. Uh, there's another part two, and then we have two parts with the Titanic data set. So then your final project. So start off with this. How would you approach this? Well, first off, um, definitely. Um, review the exercise. In this case, there's three questions which you'll need to answer. Uh, three points per question, and you have a data set either here, activities page, or there's also in this case, in this shell, it looks like it's attached down here also. So, uh, first thing is definitely start your notebook, uh, and then maybe cut and paste this to the very top of your notebook. So, so you know what things you might need to um, answer. And the second is download the source file. And download it and look at it in a raw text editor. Just to see the, make sure it's, it's sound. Um, there's no corruption. But also we can look at um, just the file itself. What are the data fields I'm, I'm working with? So you can look at there or open it in Excel or some other um, spreadsheet. So we can see we have 150 observations. It's important to know. And it's important to know the type of details about the data itself. And we can see here it's actually uh, the Iris data set. I can actually go and read details about the data set itself, the flower data set, the three species, its origins. So get familiar with the data. And it's important to do this because when it comes to details, you want to make sure you understand all aspects and communicate them correctly. What I mean by that is this. So first off, what I expect to see um, in any kind of uh, feedback in current projects, whether it's going to be within your uh, Jupyter Notebook, maybe as a markup field, definitely use markup fields for this. Don't put it in the comments, uh, code comments. But restate the question. Uh, it's important to restate the question. Then right afterwards, put your observation. And you can maybe make a note, this is based on your analysis, your, what you saw in your data. And you need summary to the graphs. Don't, don't say the answers in the graph below. Now granted, a good graph should almost answer it for you, uh, but it doesn't hurt to maybe put a one small sentence saying in the graph above or below, uh, you can see X, Y, Z. You can see the correlation between size of these two items. In any case, or not C, maybe maybe it does not exist. So, um, sort of hand holding the reader a little bit. Uh, but the idea is the graph does show most of the answer, but you definitely want to maybe take it on the right path. Also, pay attention to the details. If you say what the average is, what type of average are you talking about? Mean, median, mode. Uh, be sure you put the mean average, median average, or all three, whatever you state. And this goes back into when you um, uh, put your observations in your answers. You know. The mean, you know, the mean average was, you know, x as x versus the average was x. So it's important to start thinking about this now as you go further down and do more of these projects. Being precise with your data and how you communicate your results is very important. Again, be precise with the data also. Example, if it's in inches, don't, you know, don't say it's 25 inches when it was in centimeters. So no, again, know your, your data itself. Uh, you'll see later on there's the Titanic data set. You're going to be looking at British pounds. Uh, so it's not US dollars, the average cost. It's British pounds. And then also in that, when you put off, when you do put in the units, don't leave off the units in your, in your, uh, in your numerical averages or averages or output. An example, you know, if I would say the mean average ticket price um, is 100. 100 what? 100 dollars, 100 British pounds, so in this case. So don't have the details of that. So take a little bit of time, explore your data. 
Um, maybe definitely put maybe uh, this information inside your notebook if you want. It's just something I like to do. Just copy and paste this in there. Uh, but in any case, um, you know, we can look at the data set itself. In this case, I actually found the, the, the link for it here. I think this is inside of the uh, assignment review for the, for the, um, in the shell. But understand what I'm looking at also. What data itself? Um, is this float? In this case, this is a sample from the, from the data set. It is in centimeters based off the wiki page. Um, it's in centimeters, so I know to communicate that if, if I need to come across and talk about that. And just I want to see what line looks like. Okay, it looks like they're, they're decimal, so they're float values. And so for the last one, species, which is going to be a um, species is going to be, of course, a text, and it's going to be based off the three species in our data set. So I know I have n. You'll see the term n a lot used. 150, 150 observations, 50 per species. So that's the size of my observations. Uh, again, you don't need to be report this now, but think about later on, when you, especially when you get to the end of the course, when you do actual reporting, being able to recommunicate this across uh, to the reader of your analysis or your final um, research report or in your presentations. It's the kind of stuff that comes across very well, showing um, you have stepped up to the plate as a data analysis, data scientist per se mindset, not just a Python coder. All right, so what I have here is sort of to give you a helping hand to get started here. Um, I have what is, so I have some hidden cells. So I don't have all the code. I don't, I'm hiding some code from you on purpose here. Uh, but I'm showing you how maybe I would go in and run this first one here, which is look at these, these, these observations, right? Length by width, uh, sepal and petal length by width by species. So how can I come across this? How do I start this? So, so first off here is, um, Let's start my imports. This one I don't mind sharing um, because, <laughs> I mean, we've probably done this plenty of times, but you can see I did the standard imports and support pandas, numpy, matplotlib, uh, as mp. And I think later on I have another import. So I read the file in. Again, there's, there's some code here I'm not going to show you. Read in your file. I read it into some called main one, though. You can see I dump it out to my notebook. So I make sure it read in. Okay, I have all. I have 150 rows and five columns, so I know all my observations read in. Um, this is really the beginning of sort of verifying your data accuracy uh, or the, the integrity of your data. So if I expect 150 rows and I only get 120. What happened? Uh, of course, there's no errors in my input. So when I did the, when I did the file read in, so I can assume that it was okay. In this case, I can be I can be for sure that I have 150 rows of data. So all my observations are here. And I can see they write it okay. The float variables look correct, and so on. So maybe one of the first things I might do is I might just dump into a describe. Uh, dot describes fantastic uh, feature. Um, and just start looking at some means, uh, width, mean, standard deviation, the percentiles, the max, the mins. Uh, this could be something you could communicate in a final report. Um, just that initial, so here's the initial data observation, here's some initial stats for the whole data set. Just to give a feel for what we're looking at uh, for the range of data, you know, does one of the um, columns have a huge min-max range, you know, the range large, is some role small? I might even go as far as to, uh, if I'm gonna do any kind of comparison or correlations, I might wanna look at the normal distributions. That's gonna be a separate presentation, but this is where I would do that, and I might start doing distribution analysis on, on uh, maybe on these separate columns. These columns I'm gonna do uh, two of the um, correlation analysis with. So again, you know, this isn't really needed to, to answer my question, but it's something that I like to do to get, get an idea of the data itself. So moving on here, I have some matplotlib stuff I did. I hid those cells. I did drop the count. So I'm sort of using this data set. I'm just doing a quick plot here. I'm not going to use this plot in my final answer, uh, answer. I might not, but it's nice at least to get an idea about, well, what are we looking at? How is this stuff distributed here? The max and the min. So really just a visualization of this table. Again, it might not be required by the original, uh, in the outline of the original case study, in this case, this one. I don't need those yet. I'm looking for length by width by species. But again, it's nice to have that. So I'm grouped by species here. Again, I've, I've hidden that cell from here. Uh, 
my group by species and I get a mean. Now I can start sort of breaking this, this down. And how I work is I'll take the original data set and I'll let me break it off uh, without giving you all the code. I might create another summary, in this case I call it sum2, and it is a grouping uh, based off the previous plot. So I might take main one and maybe create someone called sum2 and so on. So I'm not one to really, so I say, destroy the main data set. I'll create subs of it. So I always go back and uh, maybe do another, another uh, sort of splinter data set off of that if, I, if need be. Um, that's how I work it. It's up to you. You can take the main one. You can start dropping columns, moving stuff um, as needed. As long as the end result is coming across, you think fulfills um, the obligation of the assignment. So the requirements, let's say. So, in any case, let's go back on here. Uh, this is the means here. Now I got some some averages. Again, some more plots here. I just want to see the plots of these averages. Again, do I need this? Maybe not. I like to see idea about how looking at uh, the length and widths here. Nothing real exciting, but again, it's part of exploring the data. So there's some more here I'm not going to show you, but I do create a smaller, I basically splinter off and I create three smaller sets here. Again, I'm hidden, hiding this code um, based off of this, um, creating one for each species. So uh, one called Versicolor, one uh, Virginia, and Satosa. So I'm creating some, you can see some of the code here, but I'm sort of creating some little means here so think of it going back, I'm taking by species. I'm taking that larger data set and it's got three species, 50 observations each. And I'm basically creating my own little small data set of each with its own mean calculations. So again, I'm sort of drilling down into the data here. Again, I might just do all one here, describe all of them, which is just a, basically all three of those is above here, length, width, by species. So again, uh, there's some code I'm, I'm hiding pi up above. Um, in this case, it's sum 2 describe. So. so now I'm getting a feel for um, I can find the right answers in here to create either a plot or create, in this case, um, I might want a plot if it's required. Create summary data plots. Okay, so I want to create plots. So I might explore in the case maybe matplotlib. Um, and this one you just use the code. And I actually did add another um, matplotlib imported pyplot as plt. Uh, so again, a little bit of help here. Uh, again, use matplotlib. There's other data, there's other frameworks you might use. Uh, one of the great one is Seaborn. It's a great one. Actually, I might bring it in. I think I show that into a later presentation. Seaborn's fantastic, and for this course, you can use other third-party libraries. You don't have to use matplotlib. Um, if you do, I would suggest please use the, use the uh, proper citation per se in the code comments. Put the link. I made a description saying, you know, brought in this library from this website, and I use this example you know, um, plot as my basis to create my plot. It's smart to do this. Um, early in the course, copying code is usually not a good idea. Later in the course, it's not uncommon to go out and find example plots, um, and it's good practice to always document where you got the source from, if you, especially if you copy directly. And really, most of the time, you're not going to copy directly. You might cherry pick parts of a plot <laughs> or parts of a code and use it. But in case, back on track here. Um, also, I find that Pandas has visualization. So I have a link here. Maybe it's just my notes. Uh, maybe I won't use this in my, in my main plotting. So I know we look at matplotlib, but actually don't forget here we have um, matplotlib as pyplot. We also have some plotting we can use here. And here's some examples. I might find something here that might work. I might not. Some bar plots, group plots, and so on. So again, this might give you some help in figuring out um, what plot you might want to use. And I know the matplotlib, I show you how to go to that site and look at those samples they have. But again, we have uh, pandas has visualization also. So don't discount pandas as just um, the spreadsheet of Python, it actually has a lot of visualization and it has um, computational tools and stuff. So Pandas is a fantastic library. And you might find yourself using it to create the plots for this. But here it says create summary data plots for the following. It doesn't say use matplotlib. 
So you have a lot, a lot of options here. So again, I might go, well, this is not what I want, you know, but it's getting close. I'm sort of seeing length with, you know, can I use, break these out? And I do that here and I, and I have some cells here. So I actually hid the, I hid the code here. I have the code running in a .py file. So you don't have to do this. I would actually normally would expect to see your code, your actual plot code. I've hidden it here just so I don't give you the answers <laughs> to how I did this. But now you can see I have some comparisons now. So I have uh, length and width comparisons generally, and I can say, well, just based on visualization here, it looks like um, length and width, there is some correlation, uh, but for CPO width and length, uh, I don't see any, it looks pretty scattered. I mean, so again, and then you would state, just based on my observation, I didn't do any correlation analysis on this, we're just doing some plots, so. Maybe the second plot, let's look at this one. Again, here we see I have another plot, a plot2.py. Again, I hit the code here just, just for me. And FYI, you can run with the percent run, you can run uh, Python uh, external files with the run.i. Pretty handy little tip there. So now we can see I can break it out by each species. So, Satosa, well, maybe does Satosa just have some, some correlation between length and width for sepal? Uh, for pedal, looks like all across the board. So uh, down here, maybe not. Very loose. And so in, in my in my final observation, I might um, down here, might, I might say, you know, based on the CPU width and length, uh, Satosa looks to have some correlation where there's loose to none. I might denote that saying, by the way, they're, they're, you know, this is just based upon my observation of the above plot. This is not based on, of course, any further um, correlation study. Um, anyway, we can know saying further correlation study could be done to actually uh, look for any like statistical correlation. But for now, uh, I just want to make sure I correctly state my answer. And if it's based on my observation from the above plot, that's what it is. That's in my answer. So, so again, that's how I approach this assignment. Uh, you'll find yourself approaching assignments, especially from Irish two to Tank one, Tank two, really going off and uh, be creative. You, again, you might find Seaborn, you might find Pandas, uh, you might find Matplotlib. Uh, there's a lot of different um, ways to approach your research. So hopefully the skills you learn in the basics of like how to load files, how to load libraries, how to write certain parts of code, how to leverage those libraries uh, to get things like averages. Um, definitely going to use that. Of course, we're gonna be, gonna, definitely going to be in a Jupyter Notebook doing this. Um, but you can for, sort of see how I went through and um, approached this, this case study. So again, this is not an exact, I guess this is sort of a demo uh, just something I want to show you how I might approach it. Uh, maybe I'll help get you started into this last section of this course. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you.